So welcome back, everyone. I am so excited about bringing on my next guest. We just heard their ad. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that there are a lot of jobs out there, especially in roofing. And it is a very lucrative uh, job that you can get. My next guest is Henry Staggs, and he's the master trainer of Arizona Roofers. Also, you have on the phone with you, you have John Espenshade, and John is the director of workforce development of National Roofing Contractors Association. First of all, welcome everybody to the show. John, uh, for, I want to talk a little bit about you and talk Tell everybody about uh, why someone should choose a job in roofing instead of like working for a service or retail business or being a radio show host. Now go ahead. <laughs> well, I uh, I don't have any experience with being a radio show host, but uh, I do have some experience with being in the retail and service industries. And uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. Um, I think the most important thing when trying to pick a job is can you see yourself doing this long term? Is this something that is going to pay you well? And is this a job where you're going to receive respect from the people that you work with? And I'll be candid, you just don't get those in the service or retail industries. Every single person you interact with is your boss. Moving up, there are only a couple of spots. And frankly, uh, the roofing industry is primed to allow people who want to work hard the opportunity to grow and make a lot of money to get paid. And that's really why I, I tout this as being a best option for people. So what has changed about how the roofing industry approaches training the, you know, in the last five years? Things are quite different. We have know that we've had Henry on several times and uh, being safe is very very important but let's talk about the training Certainly. go ahead you want you can chime in whenever you want him safety is key That's okay the first thing that, that uh, safety matters above and beyond anything else uh, a roofer can be the best roofer on the planet but if he can't get on the roof and get the work done because he's injured then it doesn't matter how good he is. Right, and there are safety matters that really, that's one thing about you guys, that's what you're all about. But let's talk about the training, John, of what you guys offer. Yes, yeah, certainly. So um, the history of training in the roofing industry is, is really scattered. And, you know, companies would spend a lot of time developing their own training because most companies only put down one or two different kinds of roof systems. Almost none of them put on, what, 10 or 11 different kinds of systems that are commonly installed these days, not even including solar. So creating standardized training, uh, which Henry actually helped me do prior to my time at the National Roofing Contract Association, and just really trying to raise the standard of the average person coming into the roofing industry and then making sure that there is a training structure there that can take them to higher skill sets, to better job titles, to advancement in their career. And all of that is very, very new just in the last five years. The idea of, wait a second, rather than everyone trying to do it themselves and create a solution that's right for them, why don't we trust someone who develops curriculum as their only task and then build something around that's going to be able to be applicable for all these companies? And we're really starting to see some traction there. And and I think that's a really exciting advancement in the industry. Now, you are looking for people to get into uh, learning and getting careers in roofing. You, the website is Arizona Careers in Roofing.com. You can also check out the National Roofing Contractors Association website, which is nrca.net. Uh, but right now, there's so many people out there that they say, well, there's no jobs. That's not true. There are jobs. And getting trained how to do it right makes it even better because if you know how to do things right, you're trained, you are uh, you can get more money, too. Yeah, there's there's probably 15,000 jobs or more available here in just uh, Arizona, a couple of hundred thousand in construction in general. Um, there's, there's just plenty of work out there. There's more work than there are skilled workers. And I want to add to what John said, too that in order to improve the standards we first have to have standards and that's what standardized training is all about is creating that baseline bare minimum we don't go below this excuse me <coughs> excuse me i'm getting over a cold um, we don't go below these standards just like the building code is the absolute worst way that you're legally allowed to build a house right standards in our industry this is the, the this is the lowest you can go and no lower than this for workmanship and safety you know, it used to be, you know, a long time ago, nobody really cared about any of this stuff. But I would say recently, and I think for you, you are on a mission. 
Yes. You're on a mission to keep those roofers Absolutely. safe. That is huge. And and it's so important. And I think people, we're going to talk about this in a little bit. I know it's going to go by fast. Are more looking for pe- that they're going to be safe, that they know that they're being taken care of. Jobs are available from, you said, desktop to rooftop. rooftop. Yeah. So there's tons of jobs out there that are available to you. What skills, uh, you know, do, do they need to have, uh, John? Well, um, for starters, it's fundamental professionalism. Um, I'll give an example. My little brother just came into the roofing industry. Um, he was afraid of heights, but now he's on steep slope roofs, you know, six days a week. Um, and just like any other job, if you want to be successful, you have to be professional, show up on time, do the job as well as you can, and be able to be coached, be trained, and allow yourself to be developed, but not be so stuck in your ways. But these are all... I don't know about you guys, but when I was learning how to have a job and be someone in the in the workforce, that's this was all kind of you know one on one level stuff. Right. Now that we have all of this opportunity, you know, Henry mentioned a hundred thousand. It's three hundred thousand jobs in construction currently available in the United States right now. So if you have, if you are one of those top two or three percent of professionals, and you're not afraid to do the hard work if it's going to get you paid right. This is really an exciting time to be entering this industry when all this importance on training and development is really coming to the forefront for the biggest contractors in the country. What kind of money can people make in roofing? Um, well, they can make more uh, coming in off the street than I did my first five years as a teacher. Things are, oh, um, I know, and teachers don't get paid. Go ahead. Oh, it's, it's absolutely it's absolutely true, but this is this is the nature of you know of why certain jobs pay. When the demand is high enough, the pay increases to the point where all of a sudden people are starting to turn to that as a viable option. We're talking at least thirty five thousand dollars a year as a starting salary if you are a full time installer. Um, after a handful of years, you can become a journeyman. You're talking about forty eight to fifty thousand dollars a year. There's a uh, a young uh, man in Ohio. We started as an installer when he was 18 years old. He's now 20 years old. He's a foreman making $75,000 a year in Ohio. So, you know, it's it's very nice that we're starting to see those kind of doors open for people who do set themselves apart right from the get-go. I think that's what you guys have done. I mean, it's happening within the industry. They've upped it up a, bit, a lot. They've really brought people, you know, they've, I, I can't, I, that's the best way to say it. They've really upped this up, the antsies a little bit with everybody. Yes. They've made the industry uh, a little bit uh, better, you know, not more just standardized. standardized, but yeah. more so too. Can you imagine having your roofer come to you and being professional? Isn't that nice to be on time? You mm-hmm. know, those are kinds of things. That, and people appreciate that too. It, it makes a difference. A young man, I, I was just talking about before um, with your engineers, He's making uh, ninety-two, ninety-six thousand dollars a year as a superintendent for one of the larger contractors, and I'll add this to what John said. I'm always adding to what John says. Um, he's the leader here. Um, when a company has standards and establishes those standards and, and holds their their crews to those standards, that's where you can make the money. Really you look quick for that. Really quickly, John, how did you get into roofing? Really quick. Um, so. Uh, so, uh, my family actually comes from the roofing industry, but um, I didn't go to work for the family business. I started off as a teacher. I ended up in uh, curriculum development, and I uh, actually helped write the new roofing apprenticeship standard with help from subject matter experts like Henry. Henry was actually asking us to do a roofing curriculum before anyone at my whole job decided that we needed to do a roofing it curriculum. It runs in the blood. Hey, you know, I want to talk to you because you also brought your daughter, and uh, uh, she's Emily Stack. She's here. She's 16. You're just about ready to get into the workforce, right? What are you looking? What? Uh, and we want to say it the way that he said. What do you want most out of a job? I think, I think the most important thing for going into a new job, especially when you're younger and stuff, I've already had my first job. I did not like it that much. My boss was kind of a jerk, too. Um, It's just being treated right. Like, not being treated, like, when I was working there, they treated me like I was a kid. Uh, It was my first job, my first professional job, at least. Uh, They treated me like I was a kid and kind of treated me badly because I had, like, the lowest job there. I was a courtesy clerk. I did carts and runbacks, stuff like that. But I think... In my opinion and some of my friends' opinion that being treated right. Right, and just because you're young doesn't mean that that means that, you know, 
that you shouldn't be treated, especially yeah. if you have a job and you you know you're really doing what you can. How old were you when you first got your first job? Fifteen. <clears throat> Fifteen I years old, right? Yeah. And so they are looking to be treated well. We've talked a little bit about this. The climate in business is very important, especially in the roofing business. Yes. There's lots and lots and lots, thousands and thousands of jobs available from desktop to rooftop. Did I say that right? <laughs> it's Arizona <laughs> It's Arizona Careers in Roofing.com. Check them out and go take a class and get trained. That's what it's all about.